Lab Guy here. I uh, went to my storage locker today to see if I could find some CV2000 format uh, half inch tapes for uh, trying out my CV2000. And I got very lucky. I found three or four tapes that are apparently educational tapes from a school in Massachusetts uh, from the early 1970s. And uh, the title on this tape is Little Fiddlers. Uh, it plays well. Um, no vertical sync. In fact, looking at it in pulse cross on the monitor, there is no vertical sync pulse. So the monitor is doing its best to lock. And, uh, but the video is really good. Audio is still intermittent on my machine, which I have traced to a dirty switch and probably bad capacitors in the audio circuit. So I'm not going to worry about the audio for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this tape using my Akai uh, 4000D uh, audio tape deck as, a, uh, as just a spooling engine. Now this is the old style box that CV2000 tapes uh, originally came in. Um, there's no guarantee that the tape you find in a box like this today is still a CV2000 recording because there were many uh, videotape recorders that used the same tapes but are different formats uh, of recording. So um, I'm using the the Paul Beck method of record uh, of cleaning which is that's interesting all right I'm on the wrong reels <laughs> okay uh, that is to uh, use paper towel silicone lubricant and some sort of a uh, deck to spool the tape rapidly from end to end while you uh, perform the cleaning function and uh, this this deck will work uh, fine for that. I have pre-cut my, uh, for myself a bunch of little paper towelettes which I will uh, drench in uh, some uh, three-in-one professional silicone spray um, which seems to uh, work pretty good. This tape has not been cleaned. Uh, the One of the other tapes that I found is a um, is a back coated tape. This is this is a, a chromium tape without back coating. The other tape was chromium tape with back coating. It took 10 passes with the paper towel and spray to get it to where I had almost no residue at the end of the cleaning process. So we spray some silicone on there. Try not to spray too much on ourselves. It's getting everywhere in here, by the way. I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. So, let this dry just a little. Turn that on, and hopefully you're not getting too much hum in the microphone. And you put it in like that and hold it with two fingers. And place the machine into fast forward. This will... Uh, clean the tape from end to end. There will be a, a gunky residue on the paper when I'm done. And this takes about three minutes to run end to end on a 30 minute tape. And so uh, just like Paul Beck showed us, uh, you put your reels on the uh, tape deck and run it through and fast forward. And there we are at the end. And let's have a look. Oh, that's that's not bad. This tape is in very good shape. The other tape, even after I cleaned it and played it, it was clogging. So that is not bad at all. I'm going to still clean it one more pass in the reverse direction, and I'll use the opposite side of the paper. Let's uh, re-thread the tape. These reels are interesting. They have a liner on them that grabs the tape. They're almost self-threading. 
All right, that's ready to go. This time we rewind the tape. The last pass was in fast forward. All right, and rewind. There we go. And let's have a look, and that's uh, that's very clean. We're um, we're going uh, to put the tape back on the CV2000, which earlier has begun to exhibit a new problem. Uh, we'll cross our fingers and hope for the best. All righty. Around the tension arm, around the idler roller and over the erase head, around the entry guide, around the scanner, over the exit guide, across the audio control track head, and through the capstan pinch roller and onto the take-up reel. This is common for almost every reel-to-reel -reel video recorder there is. And turn that on, turn this on motor on all right we are making all kinds of new noises now here we go oh that's the audio okay scrubbing the the record play switch a little makes that stop now we probably don't have audio. We don't have video either. Yeah, yeah. we got clogged heads again. I have been cleaning these heads a lot. All right. No sign of the new problem yet. I'll, I'll tell you about it if it happens. Okay. Plain old printer paper is what I like to use in the absence of anything else. I have a chamois cleaning swap, but it's in it's in nasty shape. It's got grease on it somehow. I don't really want to rub grease on the video heads. So we'll try this again. Rotate the head away lightly press the piece of paper there it goes and the head should should cross smoothly there's a little bit of dirt of course I caught the edge of the fold that's how you break a video head these things are about the size of a pencil point they're made of ferrite which is a form of glass if you move if you move up and down like this you'll break the heads right off Press the lightly moistened paper, walk the head in a straight line across it, and there is a mark. I don't know if you can see it, but it is black oxide from the tape. And we'll clean it again. And basically you, you keep moving to a clean spot on the paper until you don't get any more stripes and hope for the best. This paper is drying up pretty fast. I have dry cleaned them this way, but I don't like doing it. The um, particles of oxide scratch the face of the video heads. All right, threading it back up. Try not to drop it into the into the greasy parts of the machine. Power on and play. This tape is playing very well, but notice it still has that vertical sync problem. I've got the vertical control set on this monitor very critically 
and it uh, appears to hold most of the time unless something extra black gets in the middle of the picture towards the horizontal center and then the TV becomes confused as to which black part is the is the vertical sink. So I'm estimating this recording is from 1970 or so. It was done with crash editing, uh, meaning that they were uh, just allowing very long lead in, lead out, and uh, fading the camera to black. And again, the audio is not working. And when it was working, it was extremely low level. I, I'm almost certain this tape is not recorded with bad audio. In fact, since the other tape was behaving the same way, it is a machine problem. It is probably um, electrolytic capacitors on the audio board, which implies that other electrolytic capacitors in the machine are also defective. But as you can see, the picture quality is extremely good. We are playing video on this CV2000.